average citizen, highway maintenance appears to be a rather simple undertaking. In fact, most people don't even think about roads until they see a problem. Then, of course, they want it fixed right away. That's the essence of it. When the roads are well maintained, we don't hear a word. But let one pothole appear. Yeah, I understand your problem. Okay, thank you. But that's just part of our life in maintenance. If you don't know it already, you'll find that satisfaction has to come from the pride you take in your work. It's just not going to come from anywhere else. So that's the first thing to remember from this Highway Maintenance Overview program. Satisfaction is the result of knowing that you did the best job you could. The purpose of this program is to just give you an overview of highway maintenance. Nevertheless, that's a great deal of information. If you're new to highway maintenance, you'll probably have a lot of questions at the end of the program, and that's good. Your supervisor and the members of your crew can help you understand the many facets of highway maintenance as you gain experience. And if you've been in maintenance for a few years or more, you might be surprised at just how much you do know. No one has to tell you that this is a complex business. In fact, if you stop and think about it, our responsibilities in maintenance can be overwhelming. To begin with, there are 40 or 50 different pieces of equipment that we not only have to learn to operate properly, but also to perform periodic preventive maintenance. Add to that the 40 or so different activities that we are required to perform, and you can see that maintenance is no small task. Because of the sheer number of things we need to know, the department has developed a series of training courses to help you learn this tremendous amount of information. Basically, the training concentrates on the three types of roads. Portland cement concrete, asphalt concrete, and non-hard surfaces. But in addition, training is also available for a wide variety of other activities, such as traffic control, cleaning up slides, maintaining shoulders, drainage, Rail, mowing, and snow removal. Let's begin with the types of roads. The two most common types are Portland cement concrete and asphalt cement concrete. The third type of road is what we refer to as a non-hard surface. That term is used simply to separate it from the two types of concrete roads. Surprisingly enough, all three types share a number of similarities. To begin with, all roads are made up of various sized aggregate. 
The aggregates range in size from very small stones and sand to rather large size rocks. Aggregates are typically referred to by their sieve size. For example, any aggregates that pass this one inch sieve would typically be referred to as one inch minus material, which simply means all the material is smaller than one inch. By carefully selecting different sizes of aggregates and mixing them in specific amounts, the aggregates can be made to interlock with each other to give the road the most strength possible. For example, when we're working on an activity like base repair, we want to use one to two inch material to give the foundation as much strength as we can. The two inch material provides most of the strength but it's the one inch material that allows all the aggregates to interlock and form a strong foundation. Of course, the aggregates don't interlock by themselves. The material has to be compacted. And that's one of the keys to good maintenance. The more you can compact the material, the stronger it will be. The roadways themselves are built with the same principle. The addition, of course, is the material that binds the aggregates together. The material you see being mixed here will be used for activities such as pothole patching and lane leveling. The mixing operation begins by spreading the aggregates. In this case, one inch minus material. Followed by applying liquid asphalt. and then blading the material back and forth to allow the aggregates to interlock and to coat them with liquid asphalt so they will bind together. On the job, there is one more step to ensure high quality repair, compaction. So as you've seen, whenever you're working with aggregates or any type of asphalt mix, compaction is a major part of the job. Let's look at Portland cement concrete pavements. Like the asphalt and non-hard surface, these pavements are also constructed with different sized aggregates to allow them to interlock. And as you know, the cement binds the material together. The major difference, of course, is that this material is not compacted. Instead, it has to be vibrated soon after it's placed. The vibration of the material ensures that the various sizes of aggregates, along with the cement and water, are evenly distributed. But vibration is a rather tricky part of placing concrete, because too much vibration will do the opposite. Instead of evenly distributing the materials, over vibration will separate the materials. So the vibration should always be done quickly. The activity you've been watching is known as spall repair. It, along with joint sealing, are really the only two activities we're involved with for this type of pavement. The main thing to know about joints is that they allow the concrete to expand and contract. Our job is to see that the joints remain tightly sealed so that water and other debris will not damage the pavement. Okay, that's a very brief look at the three types of roads we maintain. Now let's take a quick look at three of your biggest concerns in highway maintenance. Safety. Traffic control. And 
preventive maintenance. Let's start with safety. The most important thing for you to keep in mind is to ask questions about any piece of equipment or procedure you're not sure of. There are enough hazards in this work without you trying to guess your way through something. For example, the material we use to seal cracks has to be heated to a very high temperature. But if it's heated too high, it'll explode. People have died working with this material. If you have a question about the material you're working with, ask. The second thing you have to do is pay attention. A lot of the work we do is repetitious, and it's easy to forget where you are. This is especially true when you've been working on the road for a few hours. Forgetting where you are here could be deadly. None of this is intended to scare you, only to give you a healthy respect for the materials, equipment, and procedures you'll be involved with every day. Now let's look at traffic control. Here's another case where there's no room for guesswork. One of the biggest problems with working on a road that remains partially open to traffic is that motorists tend to forget the warning signs they just passed. So the spacing of the devices has been carefully considered and there are exact positions for their placement depending on the type of road and its speed. And as you know, there are many types of roads. Everything from narrow, long, and straight, to wide, curving, and intersecting. As you can imagine, the placement of the devices will differ considerably. And if the devices are set up incorrectly, they can cause accidents. So again, if you have any questions about where the devices should be placed, ask your supervisor. Okay, now let's take a brief look at preventive maintenance. The whole idea here is to spot problems early and get them corrected as soon as possible. This is really your supervisor's responsibility, but because you're out on the road every day, you may be able to spot something your supervisor didn't see. The two main things you should always be looking for are first, what caused the problem that you're correcting. If you can eliminate the cause, the repair will last much longer. And the second thing to look for is water. Water causes more problems in our roadways than anything else. So if you see ponding at the side of the road or anywhere within the right of way, tell your supervisor. If the water isn't eliminated, eventually it's going to cause road damage somewhere. This diagram... And that brings us to the end of this overview presentation. We've covered a lot of information, and yet we've still only touched on the many things you need to know. As I said in the beginning of the program, your satisfaction will come from the pride you take in your work. And there is a great deal to be proud of. In the transportation field, everyone else has a specialty. As you've seen in this brief tape, your specialty is everything. <laughs>